Okay, in this video I'm going to uh, show you how to do dimensional analysis using the step-by-step -step method that I have uh, shown once in class, but I think it's helpful to have another example here. Uh, we're looking at a grain of sand. The grain of sand is, is in water and it's falling um, down towards the bottom of a, of a channel or of a lake. And we're interested as that grain of sand falls, like how much drag force does it experience? So we're going to say that the that the drag force acting on that grain of sand is going to be some function of the fluid density, the fluid viscosity, the speed that the grain of sand is falling at, the diameter of the grain of sand, and some sort of some characteristic roughness of that grain of sand. So I've drawn that grain of sand as kind of an irregular shape with roughly with a diameter d and with an irregular side that's characterized by a roughness epsilon. So over on the right hand side here, I have the steps that we want to go through in order to do this dimensional analysis exercise. So the first step is to define physical variables and we determine the number of dimensions in those variables. Um, once then we move on and compute the number of pi terms um, as n minus m. Um, uh, once we do that we have to select repeating variables. From the remaining variables those become sort of seeds for creating our um, our dimensionless variables, and we do that by dimensional analysis. So in this case, we have one, two, three, four, five, six different uh, dimensional variables. So we have n equals six. And if I look at the dimensions of this, these variables, um, let's write them down. The dimensions of drag force are going to be equal to um, force, obviously. So if we put that in units of mass, length for time squared, dimensions of density, our mass for length cubed, dimensions of viscosity, our mass per length per time, dimensions of velocity are going to be length per time, dimensions of diameter are length, and lastly the dimensions of this roughness are also going to be length. Okay, so looking over the dimensions of all these variables, what I can see is that length, time, and mass are present. So that means that the number of dimensions n is equal to 3. So we have n equal to 3. That means we'll have um, n minus n equal to 3 pi groups. Okay. Okay, which we anticipate from, from these one, two, three, four, five, six different variables, three different dimensionless variables are going to merge from our analysis. Okay, so the next step is to select repeating variables. And the repeating variables should represent the three dimensions that are present here, mass, length, and time. So we need something to represent mass. So for mass, a good um, variable is density. For um, length, a good variable in this case is the diameter, and for um, time, a, a good variable is going to be uh, the velocity. Okay, so we just need um, one variable that captures mass, one variable that captures length, and one variable that captures time. We're not saying here the dimensions of velocity or time, we're just saying that since velocity has dimensions of time, we can use that in order to non-dimensionalize other variables that have dimensions of time. Um, why did I choose these variables? Um, typically, you want to choose variables that, first of all, are not the variable you're looking for. Um, in this case, we're kind of looking for force, so we don't want to use force as one of our repeating variables. Um, secondly, we, don't, we want to look use variables that are relatively simple expressions of each dimension. This has um, units of mass per length cubed, so it's a pretty simple expression of mass. This is a very simple expression of length in the sense that it exactly represents length. And this is a relatively simple expression of time. Um, a third reason you might want to choose a variable is because it's something you can easily measure. So um, can we measure the density? Yes. Can we measure the diameter? Yes. Can we measure the velocity? Yes. That's another reason to choose those as repeating variables. Okay. Since we've chosen now velocity, diameter, 
in density as our repeating variables, that means our pi groups, which are sometimes called your, your Q variables in the textbook, those are going to be the remaining variables. We're going to have drag force, we're going to have viscosity, and we're going to have roughness. Okay, so now each of these remaining variables needs to be non-dimensionalized using these variables in order to write it dimensionless variables. So now, this is where the step-by-step -step method comes in, and um, I think it's helpful to, to do this in a tabular format. So we'll write something kind of like this, a nice big table, where on the left side we have the variable. So we have, in this case, starting with the drag force, here we will start with the viscosity, okay, and over here we'll start with the roughness. And um, on the other side of each table, we want to put the dimensions. So we've already worked out the dimensions here. We have mass uh, length per time squared. We have mass per length per time, and we have length. So um, typically, I like to start with mass and get rid of mass, and then get rid of time, and then get rid of length. It usually is a a good way to solve problems. Sometimes it's um, not the best way, but you generally want to start with the variables that are more complicated in terms of their um, dimensionality um, and work your way towards something simple. And in this case, we have a very simple length scale, so it's nice to wrap up with that one. So in order to get rid of mass here, if I were to divide the drag force by the density, that would get rid of mass, because I would have mass, length, per time squared, divided by density, so that's going to show up as sort of length cubed over mass. And so now those two mass variables cancel, and we end up with length to the fourth over time squared. Okay, so I have length to the fourth over time squared. Over here, I also need to get rid of mass, so I can also divide by rho. So if I do mu over rho, now I've got mass per length per time, again, length cubed over mass. So those two cancel, and dimensions of that worked out to be length squared per time. Okay, so I've successfully removed mass from these variables. I didn't have to touch this one because it doesn't have mass. I'm now, I'm now going to move on to velocity. So this has dimensions of time squared. My velocity variable has dimensions of time. So that means if I were to divide this, this variable, FD of a row, by velocity squared, I would be getting rid of time. So now I'm going to write FD over rho D squared. When I do that, I'm going to get these dimensions, length to the fourth per time squared. Um, and I'm going to have length squared per time squared. That's the velocity squared dimensions. And so um, that's going to cancel two of those guys. And that's going to cancel that. And what I'm left with is length squared. Over here, I need to divide by velocity to the first power, because I have one dimension of time in the denominator. So now I have length squared over time and length over time. So that time will cancel. And one of those lengths cancels. And now I'm just left with a length. Okay, so now what I've done is I've, I've simplified everything. So each of these variables now only depends on length. So now I can finally come through with my last repeating variable, which is d, and clean up uh, the rest. So this is going to have lengths to the second power. So I need to divide this expression by my length scale d to the second power. So I'm going to have fd over rho d squared d squared, and that's going to be dimensionless. And here I'm going to have mu over rho vd, and that's dimensionless. And here I'm going to have epsilon over d, and that's also dimensionless. So I've now simplified. I've I've created three dimensionless numbers from the three dimensional numbers that I started with. And um, the way you can kind of finalize this problem 
This is, this is just to say that we now have a problem where this dimensionless, no, this dimensionless drag, fd over rho d squared d squared, is some function, we don't know what that function is, of this variable, mu over rho vd, and this variable, epsilon over d. Okay? So we're saying this dimensionless drag expression can be can you can expect to be some function of this ratio and this ratio. And this ratio is just the inverse of a Reynolds number. So that's kind of a familiar number. It's the ratio of inertia in the denominator, in this case, to the viscous forces in the, nu in the numerator. And this is called a relative roughness. Um, typically, since this is a familiar number, it's a Reynolds number, but it's upside down, there's no trouble just flipping it because it's still dimensionless if you turn it upside down. So we can also rewrite this in a more simple way, which is to say the drag over rho d squared d squared is some function of rho v d over mu and the relative roughness. Okay? So just to recap, the uh, dimensional analysis method using a step-by-step -step method the key thing here is that, um, just as before, you identify the total number of physical variables, you identify the number of dimensions, you compute the number of pi groups, um, you select repeating variables. That's the same as the method that's taught in the book. What's different is that instead of using the exponents that you're using the book to figure out the, uh, the dimensionless numbers, you do it in a more sort of iterative way, just kind of stepping along, removing one dimension at a time. So you take... Um, find the three remaining variables once after you've selected your uh, repeating variables, whatever is left over become your remaining variables, or your so-called Q variables. And so those become the starting point for a step-by-step-by-step -by -step -by -step method that leads you to one dimensionless number being some function of two other dimensionless numbers. Okay?